The world's second largest economy and consumer market is likely to have entered a recession, at least by Chinese standards. On July 10, 2022, China witnessed a rare event, large-scale protests. Hundreds, or perhaps thousands, of people showed up in front of the Zhengzhou People's Bank in Zhengzhou, the capital of Henan province, to protest against bank fraud. Several small banks in Henan froze the deposits of hundreds of thousands of people and went AWOL. Anxious people, worried about their life savings, stormed a provincial branch of China's central bank and demanded their money back. In early 2021, Beijing banned banks from selling deposit products via online platforms, fearing that the rapid expansion of the fintech sector could increase risks in the broader financial system. But savers CNN spoke to claim banks told them deposit products were legal and protected by the deposit insurance scheme. If the incident is determined to be financial fraud or if the affected accounts are not strictly savings deposits, they may not be protected by the deposit insurance scheme, Wang said. Deposits of up to 500,000 yuan, nearly $75,000, are guaranteed in China in case of bank failures. But if the government investigation determines that these cases involve non-compliant transactions, people could lose everything. The social unrest resulting from the accident could be a major problem for the government. Most affected are low-income farmers who had deposited nearly all of their life savings, Wang said. Why the protest? A few months ago, a number of small banks, mostly in Henan province, froze the deposits of several of their customers and stopped the withdrawal of money. The bank cited maintenance work at the time for the frozen funds. Websites also showed that it is under maintenance. But after two months, when the problem was not resolved, people started getting worried. Since then, the banks have gone AWOL with billions of yuan of depositors' money. Protests similar to the recent one were attempted earlier, and one protest was held in May, but authorities had dispersed the crowds. Reports even revealed that authorities used COVID trackers to prevent victims of the banking scam from going out of their homes and protesting. Some protesters who reached the protest site in June told international media that their health status turned red, automatically forcing them into quarantine. During the Sunday protest, too, a group of unknown men in white shirts, reported to be security personnel, clashed with protesters. Victims confided in the media that they were being silenced and intimidated by the government, even when they have broken no law. Why is this crisis so big? At least 39 billion yuan, $5.8 billion, is believed to have been frozen. About 400,000 bank customers in China have lost access to life savings. The shady company behind the fraud owns more than 100 shadow companies and controls at least 13 rural banks. The banks involved allegedly offered interest rates of up to 9%, while the country's statutory interest rate ranged between 3 and 4%. Henan Bank Protests Banking problems in Henan first emerged in April when customers of the new Oriental Country Bank of Kaifeng, Shanghai Yumin County Bank, and Yuzhu Jinmin Shi Village Bank discovered they were not able to withdraw the funds from local banks. Thousands of depositors fled the banks after the government arrested Sun Zhang Fu, the majority shareholder of several banks, for serious financial crimes, according to Chinese media. After bank depositors complained to local media, China's banking regulator announced an investigation into banks in late April. But after weeks of not being able to access their money, bank customers started protesting at local banks and government offices. In response to the protests, local authorities in Henan have put together applications of the Chinese health code COVID-19. In China, citizens use health code apps to access almost everything outside their homes, from workplaces to cinemas. QR code-based applications use a traffic light system, Green indicates that the user has a minimal risk of contracting COVID, yellow indicates moderate risk, and red indicates high risk and prohibits the user from entering commercial businesses or public places. In late May, bank depositors, some of whom did not even participate in the protest, reported that their health codes had turned red after public demonstrations in local banks. China's central government later accused local Henan authorities of abusing the health code system by placing 1,317 people on the health code red list after the protest, according to state media. The central government expelled a local official, the director of Henan's virus control department, and punished four others with administrative penalties for the violation. The Larger Context Bank fraud highlights China's biggest problem of small credit institutions and rampant corruption within them. China has about 4,000 small credit institutions, which own a quarter of the total assets of the banking sector. Beijing is also said to be struggling to find a solution to the growing number of bad loans with small lenders. 
Although the authorities have promised to return some of the victim's money, it is unlikely that it will cover the full amount of the deposit, for the most part. In addition, banks have also acquired deposits from people residing outside Henan, which is not allowed. Victims across China may not be eligible for government assistance. Effect of Such Crisis In response to the 2008 financial crisis, China launched a 4 trillion yuan, at the time $586 billion tax package, as well as an unprecedented increase in bank lending that spurred demand for commodities and commodities consumption, all of which, in the process, raised trading partners like Australia and Brazil and major global corporations. It repeated the exercise on a small scale in 2016, using fiscal spending to revive the housing market. This time around, it's different. China's planned stimulus is unlikely to do much to reverse the global economic slowdown. With China's economy now more than double, accounting for over 18% of global output, politicians are hesitant to unleash anything on the scale of the 2008 bombing, which left a legacy of debt and record corporate defaults. Beijing has promised an additional government spending package and tax cuts worth around 4.5 trillion yuan. While it is quietly allowing local governments to raise off-balance sheet debt to finance infrastructure, it is less than half the 2008 support of gross domestic product. Also, unlike in 2008, the government is facing virus outbreaks and appears determined not to use real estate to boost the economy. President Xi Jinping's rigorous COVID-0 approach to curbing infections means the potential for growth disruptions this year is significant and the country will be a drag on the world economy. China's Real GDP Growth The warnings of a global recession are increasing in number. Central banks around the world are raising interest rates to curb inflation, and the Russian invasion of Ukraine is sending shockwaves through global supply chains. Last month, the International Monetary Fund cut its global growth forecast for 2022 to 3.6%, down from 4.4% in pre-war January. The world is facing a perfect storm of potential recessions in China, the European Union, and the U.S., says former IMF chief economist Kenneth Rogoff. Xi promised an all-out effort to increase infrastructure in China. This includes massive wind and solar power plants in the nation's deserts, with a first batch of renewable energy projects within that will add 97 gigawatts of generation capacity, enough to power Mexico. The Australia and New Zealand Banking Group compared the planned stimulus with that implemented during the global financial crisis. Citigroup Inc. called it the Chinese version of a new deal but skeptics argue that the country cannot restart its economy as it imposes lockdowns to curb the COVID. They say spending announcements to support the economy lack firepower. China's share of global economic output Officials are trying to do the impossible, says Helen Kiao, chief economist for Greater China at Bank of America. Reach a 2022 growth target of around 5.5% and keep COVID zero by reducing debt. In previous cycles, Policymakers had predictably proposed coordinating easing of monetary, fiscal, and real estate policies to boost investment growth, he says. This time around, China appears to have far more reserves against a buildup of leverage coupled with concerns about oil-led inflation and Fed tightening. Arguably, a long list of easing measures have been implemented so far, but with limited coordination and effectiveness. There is a contradiction between the government's promise to add stimulus and its COVID-0 policy, which calls for restrictions on mobility where there are more than a handful of cases. There is no inclination to relax the policy, partly due to low vaccination rates among people over the age of 80. Political considerations also play a role. There is a Communist Party Congress in the fall, during which many officials will be selected for promotion. Top leaders have warned against publicly questioning Xi's strategy, with a Politburo standing committee pledging to fight any speech that distorts questions, or rejects our country's COVID control policy. With that being said, it's time to end today's video. Press the like button and subscribe to our channel for more interesting stuff. Peace out!